hi guys it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times here on Friday the 13th we have made it to Friday the 13th here in Doomsday Eco Lodge in St. Croix Virgin Islands so Friday the 13th especially is the easiest day I have of the week to be a to be in what am I anyway? What the hell am I? I'm a doomsday prophet and an environmental alarmist. You gotta love it. Friday the 13th is a doomsday prophet's uh, favorite day of the year for sure. As it is so easy for me to be one because today is the day I get my favorite environmental newsletters for Center for Biological Diversity and mongabay.com who do my work for me, <coughs> surveying all of the media from the past week to chronicle how this unlucky planet, unlucky by having humans born onto it, uh, has been heading directly into a brick wall in the past seven days. And so I'm going to start out like I always do with the Center for Biological Diversities endangered earth and this is a crazy story coming out of nowhere uh, so let's dive right into it I thought it was a typo lost words I thought they meant lost worlds but no lost words lost creatures nature disappearing from the dictionary and uh, since 2007, Oxford University Press has updated its prestigious, widely used junior dictionary, which has a limit of 10,000 terms to define. Okay, so they don't have room for everybody, so in order to make room for the words celebrity, mp3 player analog and broadband among other words and 26 other words let's hear some of the words that have fallen out of the dictionary to make room for celebrity and mp3 player okay we have lost from the dictionary acorn beaver beach meaning the tree, not the beach. Blackberry, boar, cheetah, clover, fern, ferret, heron, kingfisher, lark, leopard, lobster, magpie, otter, panther, porpoise, raven, and willow. You will not find the definitions of any of those any longer in the Oxford Dictionary for Kids. This is what my hero, Margaret Atwood, I have I had several uh, Sunday Doomsday sermons from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, author Margaret Atwood, has publicly requested that the words be reinstated. Quote, <clears throat> We are profoundly alarmed. Um, the letter begins by the replacement of words associated with nature with those, quote, associated with the increasingly interior solitary childhoods of today. There, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Good for, good for Margaret, um, but I need to move on from there. I guess the word wolf somehow still making it in the dictionary so maybe kids can understand this headline bill would end protection for four thousand wolves in four states a bill introduced in the u.s house of representatives this morning i don't know if that means today or yesterday would strip Endangered Species Act protections from 4,000 gray wolves in four states and open them up to more 
hunting and trapping and they point out after they did this in the Great Lakes more than 1600 wolves have been gunned down and speaking of wolves that have been gunned down DNA tests confirm wolf killed in Utah was indeed the historic Grand Canyon visitor so this was that wolf named Echo wearing uh, this big ass collar I think it is that a bright red collar being you know getting all these headlines as showing up in the Grand Canyon and then she walked away from the National Park promptly gunned down by some redneck confusing her for a coyote uh, I guess a coyote wearing a big collar I don't know okay this is their continuing story from California dangerous levels of chemicals found in fluid from California oil wells a new analysis finds that flowback fluid from fracked oil wells in California commonly contains dangerous levels of cancer causing chemicals benzene levels more than 1500 times the federal limits for drinking water were found in fracking flowback fluid tests Jesus chromium 6 detected in 118 wells blah 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 this is from a story in the LA Times I'm gonna put the links to how you can get these newsletters going back to that giant copper mine in Arizona hundreds speak out against giveaway of sacred Apache land in Arizona to mining company I talked about this last week uh, good God what is going on in the lawsuit department the Center for Biological Diversity um, being into lawsuits the center and allies have just filed our third lawsuit since 2002 to save the United States' only population of Arctic grayling which has been reduced to less than 5% of its historic range mostly because of these goddamn hydroelectric dams and now survives only in one short stretch of the Big Hole River and a few lakes. Uh, uh, okay, guys, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not that often that I pull out my bullshit detector button in this newsletter. Okay, but here it is. Get free love calls of the wild cell phone ringtones for Valentine's Day and I love it when they ask a question in the lead what better way to declare your love for the wild than to fill the air with soulful funny or fierce animal calls whenever your cell phone rings uh, well, I, I, I've got one answer to that question. This is just one better way to show your, to declare your love for the wild is to throw your goddamn cell phone and, it, 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 well, where would, where do you saw, throw the goddamn cell phone? Into the river? Into the landfill? Why don't you go bury your goddamn cell phone in a fucking uh, hazardous waste dump where the stupid thing belongs. I can't believe th that the Center for Biological Diversity offering 25 specially selected ringtones that include wildlife mating calls. Oh, Jesus. Y you know... Uh, any, anyway, okay. Note, they are not available for iPhones just yet. But don't worry, the, the Center for Biological Diversity 
no doubt next year will uh, allow you to put uh, declare your love for wildlife by putting walruses fucking uh, on your iPhone. Jesus Christ. Moving along to Manga Bay. Uh, all right, I, I love this one. Uh, okay, let's start with their second story of the week. <clears throat> Forestry giants zero deforestation commitment put to test. An independent audit of the world's largest pulp and paper producer, which would be the Asia Pulp and Paper Corporation, found that the company had achieved a wide range of results in meeting its promises to end deforestation and resolve conflicts with forest communities. That was bullshit. Okay, and let's just scroll down in the same newsletter. A few inches below that letter. That story, let's read this story. Pulpwood Company may be denying, may be denying Sumatran communities' rights to their land, huh? For over a decade, a conflict has been brewing between this local community of Senarang in Sumatra, Indonesia, and a major pulpwood plantation company known as Asia Pulp and Paper. As Indonesia's Ministry of Forestry awarded a lic license to an APP subsidiary to clear the village forest for acacia plantations to generate paper pulp. There you go. So that is one way that Asia Pulp and Paper is meeting its zero deforestation commitment. <clears throat> okay, here's one that uh, a, a jaw-dropping story uh, that I guess I can't hit the bullshit button on, but I, I, I don't know what really went on here. From, from Ecuador, unbelievably, mining activists released after being charged with terrorism and rebellion in Ecuador. This is mining and environmental activist Javier Ramirez walked out of an Ecuadorian courtroom with his freedom. Uh, he had been fighting against this massive state-owned copper mine in the cloud forest village of Hunin. I, this is where I was for about a year was arrested in April last year and charged with rebellion, sabotage, and terrorism, among other things. So my guess is uh, they just got him out of the way so that these goddamn planet eaters up there in the cloud forest of Ecuador could ramp up their goddamn copper mine. And uh, so anyway, amazing. He didn't get a bullet through his head. Let's see. From Ecuador to Malaysia, illegal logging contributed to deadly Malaysian floods, according to government minister. You think so? Okay, now finally, we have this story for anybody who does not understand that it is the goddamn banksters, the banksters who are behind it all, behind it all, the, the New World Order, the global industrial civilization taking down this planet. How about this little headline here? What bank is this? This is Banco Santander targeted over deforestation link. Greenpeace has opened a new front in its campaign against a controversial Indonesian logging company 
by targeting one of its major financiers, Banco Santander. Uh, you know, guys, they could target any goddamn bank they feel like, <coughs> including my own bank, Bank of America. Jesus Christ, I got a lot of room to talk about Banco Santander when uh, I have my a few dollars left in Bank of America. Jesus. There we go. Let's go over there and do Indonesia. Indonesia dissolves agency charged with forestry reform. Yes, I bet it does. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I, I, I love this one more of this green washing. Ranking the best and worst companies in terms of deforestation. While a number of high profile companies have adopted policies designed to exclude deforestation from their commodity supply chains. What we just were talking about, AP and P's. Uh, such commitments remain outside the norm, indicating that most companies still lack forest-friendly safeguards. Do you think so? Finds a comprehensive survey conducted by the Global Canopy Program. There you go. Uh, looking, grading companies' performance. Uh, looking at soy, palm oil, beef and leather, timber, pulp, and paper. Yeah, which are all 100% dependent on uh, on taking down a planet. Anyway, let's go over, let's look over there. What's going on in Central America this week? Pollution from fossil fuels decreased rainfall in Central America. Fossil fuel production may have caused a southerly shift in a vital rain belt across Central America, according to a new study in Nature Geoscience, potentially leading to drier conditions and droughts in some of the tropical countries. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Let's go over there from Central America to Malaysia. <clears throat> Malaysian authorities failing to take action against poachers. You think so? Authorities in Sabah are failing to enforce anti-poaching laws, undermining governance and wildlife protection efforts in the Malaysian Borneo state. Mm. From Malaysia to Norway. Norway Sovereign Fund drops coal, tar sands, and gold mining companies. In its first ever report on responsible investing, Norway's pension fund announced last week that it has divested from 114 companies in the past three years due to concerns over global warming deforestation and sustainability you know what's not maybe in the fuller story it might mention somewhere that the entire country of Norway I don't know and my guess is this pension fund itself is probably about what about 80 percent dependent on oil revenues on oil revenues you always see, uh, you know, Norway always being, and good for them, credited as, as some sort of leader in uh, the environmental movement, when, of course, the entire goddamn country is dependent on oil revenues. And if, and if they took oil revenues out, out of their own national budget, 
you, you would you would see something some snap crackling and popping in or in Norway. Hmm, okay, from Norway, I guess, to the whole planet. Pollinator collapse could lead to a rise in malnutrition. Yeah, I guess if malnutrition is a subset of starvation. Saving the world's pollinators may be a public health issue. According to recent research, scientists have long believed that pollinators are important for human nutrition. Hmm. But this is the first time they have tested the hypothesis and what they found is disturbing. Pollinator collapse could increase nutrient deficiency across local populations by up to 56%. Yeah, right. I need to come play you when the each morning I'm awake and in my tent by these these honeybees, these thousands, if not millions, of honeybees descending on these flowering trees outside my uh, tent. Anyway, from pollinators, let's go to the Peruvian Amazon, where I still have my place for sale. Anyone who wants to buy a place. Scientists warn investors on cacao companies' forest destruction in Peru, otherwise known as chocolate. A prominent group of scientists sounded the alarm over forest clearing by a cacao company in the Peruvian Amazon. Yeah, anywhere chocolate is grown, uh, you can... Talk about that, and I guess a fairly short roundup this week. Here is how termites hold back the desert. Some termite species erect massive mounds that look like great temples springing up from the world's savannas and dry lands. But aside from their aesthetic appeal, new research in science find that these structures do something remarkable for the ecosystems. They actually hold back the desert. Hold back the desert. So I would say these little bugs work is cut out for them. They're talking about in the Sahel region of Africa, the Sahel region, reading in the mainstream media today that the UN, the United Nations, is looking for two billion dollars in foreign aid for the Sahel region of uh, Africa, talking about donor fatigue, how these aid agencies from Oxfam to the UN that the rest of the world is just pretty much saying screw you to sub-Saharan Africa. They're, they're sick and tired of it. And, and, and I, my comment to that mainstream media story was I will be happy to donate ten dollars to the UN uh, to the UN Sub-Saharan Africa Birth Control Fund. Donor fatigue. Uh, you know? Good God. Donor fatigue is right. Two billion more dollars. These people with the highest birth rates on the entire planet pumping out these goddamn kids one after another after another after another holding out their hands to the United Nations in Oxfam to come feed their starving children. Anyway, I think I'm getting off track. Uh, no, I'm not. This is exactly uh, anybody who wants to understand the collapse of a planet, although it was never mentioned in either one of these newsletters, needs to go no further than the Sahel region 
and it's going to take a hell of a lot more than termite mounds to hold the desert back as Mother Nature brings out her broom. I don't give a shit what the UN is doing to fight Mother Nature. They're going to lose. Anyway, I need to wrap up this Friday the 13th Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant and figure out what the hell I'm going to do with the rest of my gorgeous day here in the end times as my time here in paradise ticks away. Bye, guys.